the evaluation contest follows all the rules outlined in the Toastmasters speech contest rulebook and begins with a presentation of a five to seven speech by a test speaker. I do confirm that the test speaker is not from the same club as any of the contestants and that the speech is a contest type speech. I will introduce the test speaker by announcing the speaker's name, the speech title, speech title, and the speaker's name again. At the conclusion of the test speech, as has been said by our chief judge, all the six contestants will go into a breakout room. You will have five minutes to write up your notes and you will be under the supervision of a sergeant of arms, Anthony Karibioki. You have five minutes, like I have said, to write up your notes. Contestants, you may not use digital or any other such devices during the contest to gain an unfair advantage. I want to say now that the, the order of the contestants how were randomly selected and you guys were in the room and we will go as follows. Contestant number one, Lucy Manyara. Contestant number two, Japheth Musau. Contestant number three, Harriet Ositi. Contestant number four, Ethiopia's Tadisi. Contestant number five, Enid Kanyeri. And contestant number six, Mary Kipkemori. Toastmasters and guests, I will now go ahead to introduce our test speaker. Our test speaker for today is Nadia Vanderpool with a speech title, Why Settle? Why Settle? Nadia Vanderpool. It's kind of puzzling to me that man can invent a computer chip that mimics the human brain. But again, considering the level of some people's IQ, this could be somewhat simple. But when I think about other inventions, like the highly advanced cell phones that can tap into your location and track you down like an investigator on cheaters, or even those new Tesla vehicles that can detect its own system malfunction and proactively order replacement parts, it's kind of puzzling to me that no one has invented a system that can create the perfect mate who meets all of the requirements of the one in search of love. Considering the track record, this should be a no brainer. But I guess finding true love is just not this simple. Contest chair, fellow Toastmasters and guests, sometimes I wonder does the perfect guy even exist? Honestly, I have no idea. But I can tell you this, through dating, you are able to vet a number of options simultaneously. And this saves a lot of time and heartache. Believe it or not, this hasn't always been my perspective on how I would find the man of my dreams. But after my last relationship, I now understand why Maureen Dodd said, when you settle for less than you deserve, you get even less than you've settled for. So my question to you is, why settle? I believe that many of you are settling in your lives and maybe you don't even realize that you are. How many of you have been trying for a very long time to improve your public speaking skills? Are you still allowing fear to prevent you from progressing? And what about those of you who have been making New Year's resolutions for the past five years to lose 15 pounds. Are you still struggling because your autopilot is set 
to fast food restaurants or any place other than the gym? And what about those dead end relationships that you refuse to let go of because you feel a sense of obligation or even the fear of being alone? Can any of you relate? I know I can. Remember that relationship I spoke about earlier? Here's how that experience has taught me why it's never acceptable to settle for less than you want in life. I had been dating this guy for a little over a year. To my knowledge, everything was going fine until I noticed a change in his behavior. He seemed very distant and uninterested. And so I decided to confront him. Apparently, he had an epiphany that we were not aligned, and he abruptly ended our courtship. Can you believe the audacity of this man? Well, this experience, so heartbreaking, was revolutionary, and a new Nadia emerged. I decided to step outside of my comfort zone and do something that is untraditional for women. I began serial dating. And boy, can I tell you, this unconventional style of dating has transformed me. I was in search of love, but what I found is something more valuable than anything I could have asked for. I found me. And I am here to tell you that you too can have this very same self-discovery if you just believe in yourself. So, Maybe you need advancement in your professional career. Or maybe you've been planning to further your education. Or what about your partnership that is just not offering the love, support, or the attention you desire? Whatever dreams, whatever goals, whatever area in your life you're trying to improve, I challenge you right now to make the decision to stop settling. Stop making excuses, stop putting off today for tomorrow, stop being controlled by the labels of society, and most importantly, stop settling for less than you deserve. Like me, step outside of your comfort zones, embrace the uncertainties, take a risk, and go after your dreams. Challenge yourselves. I promise you, what you will find is a world that needs you, that needs your gifts, that needs your talents, that needs you to be the best version of you. So free yourselves and go beyond the limits, and you will begin to live your best life. And since we have only one life to live, I ask you the question, why settle? Contest chair. Round of applause, use the emoji. Thank you, thank you very much, our test speaker, Nadia Vanderpool. At this moment, I will request our lead, Sajita Tams Neema, to please invite all the contestants to a breakout room where they will be accompanied by SAA Anthony Karaoke. Please confirm, Madam SAA, once that is done. And meanwhile, I will request Nadia to come back on stage as we have a conversation and get to know you a little bit better. Hello. You're waiting for confirmation from BSA.
Done. Dan, I think I had it done. Thank you very much. Nadia Vanderpool. Thank you very much for your speech. Toastmasters, ladies and gentlemen, Nadia is coming to us all the way from the Bahamas. And I think it is about 3.30 a.m. where she's at. So thank you very much, Nadia. And she is president-elect for her club, Pinnacle Seekers. Nadia, you did say to me that one of your greatest achievements has been the title of Bikini Wellness Champion in 2020. Please tell us a little bit about that. Thank you so much for the question. Yes, that is, well, it was, but now, the greatest one is actually becoming the president elect of my Pinnacle Seekers Club just this past Wednesday. So let's get back to the Bikini Wellness Champion. It was a very long journey. I started off the journey very much overweight at uh, 234 pounds is what I started out at the beginning of the journey. And I went on stage at a weight of two, um, 100 and I think it was about 37 pounds. So I would have lost almost 100 pounds by myself. So it was a very long journey. Um, one that I, I wasn't expecting to win, but when I got into it, I, I just could not stop. And I started competing. And I said in my mind that I wanted to become the champion and then move on to compete in international competitions. So, so far I am now the Bahamas Bikini Wellness Champion. And I plan to go back once I'm done with my, when I'm done with my Toastmasters goals, then I'll go back into my fitness goals and compete on an international stage. Oh, great stuff, Nadia. You lost a hundred pounds. And I'm sure after this, the ladies will be asking me for your number to find out just <laughs> exactly how you did it. But great stuff and congratulations to you. So your other great accomplishment is actually participating in the international speech contest. Tell us about yes. that. Tell us about that journey and how far you went with that. Okay, well, I would have joined Toastmasters, I think in November, 2020. And the purpose of, for me joining Toastmasters, I, I'm a little afraid. I have a fear of impromptu speaking. So I wanted to um, join Toastmasters to help me overcome that fear. Um, I heard about the speech competition. Um, I love giving speeches and presenting. I'm very good at prepared speaking. I, I can still learn a bit, but I'm kind of comfortable, more comfortable with prepared speaking. So at the last minute, I decided to, to join the international speech competition. I had a story I wanted to share, which is actually the same speech I would have presented a few minutes ago. Um, so I was able to win the clubs, competition, then I went into district and division. I got as far as division and um, then I didn't go any further, but I do plan to go back. So I will be back and compete again. And hopefully the next time I'm able to go a bit further, maybe to the internet, um, to, the, to the world stage, maybe we'll see, but I'll keep trying. <laughs> Yes, maybe. Who knows? Do you have what it takes? Congratulations yes. to you, anyhow, for having gone thus far. Nadia, yes. you are president-elect. Tell us a little bit about what is your vision for your club come the next year? What do you see yourself doing or what do you want to accomplish as president? As president-elect for my club, I intend to try to grow our club a bit more. I know during COVID, um, our membership had fallen off a bit. Um, so I, I'm going to try to get some of the old members to come back, but not just focusing on the old members, but try to get um, a lot more new members involved in the club and then work on retaining the new membership. So I'm trying to me, my team and I, we're going to try to um, think of innovative ways to get our membership up, um, try to have very exciting meetings to get everybody excited about being a part of the Toastmasters Club and, and to help us in our journey and to obtain our goals throughout the Toastmasters year. 
Good, thank you very much indeed. That is in line, I believe, with what all of us as leaders in Toastmasters want to do, increase and encourage variety and a good experience in Toastmasters and to grow the cloud. Nadia, tell me about what inspires you the most. And you did say that your biggest desire is to be successful in life. I do see yes. the red light, but go ahead and just tell us one area in your life where you really want to be successful. I want to be successful in my professional development. Um, I want to get myself in a leadership platform where I'm able to lead others and to help them um, to see that they can achieve anything they set their mind to. And in terms of that, I'm also running for the president of my employee um, union at work. So that election is next week, Thursday. And if I were to become president next week, Thursday of the employee union, I would be leading 450 staff members at work. And so I'm praying that I'm also successful in that endeavor because I look forward to the challenge and to leading my fellow coworkers into changing the entire culture and atmosphere at my job. Good, good stuff, Nadia. Thank you once again for coming all the way and doing this. And we wish you all the best in next week's elections. And please send me a message and let me know how that I goes. Thank you. I definitely will. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And please stay with us for the rest of the contest. Toastmasters, ladies and gentlemen, I believe the five minutes are over. I want to confirm from the SAA, do I have contestant number one, Lucy Manyara, in the room? She'll be coming out shortly. Okay, thank you. Like I said, Toastmasters, ladies and gentlemen, the contestants have two to three minutes to present their speech. After that, we will have one minute of silence to give the judges time to write up their ballot. Essay here until you let me know that Lucy is in the room. Lucy, if you would, please unmute and pin the timer. Confirm to me that you have pinned the timer and that you can see the timer on your screen. I can see the timer, but I can't, I'm not able to pin because it's just saying chat. SAS, if you could kindly assist Lucy. You can see the timer, but you cannot pin the timer. No. Madam SA, Chair, ask the SA to unspotlight you both, then she pins them first. Okay. Nema, unspotlight us. Yes, I have pinched the timer. Good, you have pinned your, the timer. I think I had you well, but please Lucy say, good morning, everybody, just so that we can hear you properly. Good morning, everyone. 
Okay, good. I will introduce each contestant by announcing their name and will repeat their name twice. And that will be your cue, Lucy, to begin. Lucy Manyara. Lucy Manyara. My West once said that we only live once, but if we do it well enough, once is good enough. Thank you, Nadia, for sharing with us that compelling speech on why we should not settle for less than we deserve. Contest Chair, Toastmasters, guests, and Nadia, what did I really love about this speech? Three things stood out for me. One was the title. When the contest chair read this title, why settle for less? It spoke a thousand words long before the speaker even said a word. Why settle? Who is settling? We are all used to settling so many things in our lives. But I wanted to, to know exactly. So it created intrigue and anticipation. Number two, the speaker is a master of our own language, of the language. Just like the grandmaster of chess is a master of the chess pieces. She gave vivid description and also talked so that she was so inclusive of all, all of us, those who are more auditory, who love listening, and also those who love seeing. Well done, profound. And then number three, I love that the speaker used a personal story. A story gives authority and authenticity with a clear conflict, content to go with it, and also a bit of a And not just that, there was also a structure of the whole speech from the introduction, the content inside the body, and the, then the conclusion. What would I have loved that the speaker puts in the speech to make it even better? Number one was, I noted that the speaker was in one position all the time. I would have loved when the speaker says one point in one place and moves to the next place and talks about another point. That way she could use the speech and also move strategically. Number two, a pause. Just like music happens between the notes, real communication happens between poses. When she talks about, can we really found a mate? Pause. And then number three, the story. I noted the story was there, but take her through the deep down, the roller, emotional roller coaster. What really happened? How did you get out of it when you started serial dating? And then finally, a call to action. We have given you five to seven minutes of our time. So what do we go home after this to do simply because we listened to Nadia's speech? In summary, I loved the compelling title, the language, vivid description. If the speaker could work on moving using the stage, the pose, emotional roller coaster, and a strong call to action, that would be great. Overall, our crafted, beautifully delivered, impactful speech. Contest chair. Thank you, Lucy. You may now put off your video and mute yourself. We will give one minute for the judges to write up their ballots. Meanwhile, Madam SAA, please bring out the second contestant. Our second contestant is in the room. Timer is one minute over.
Quintus Chair, it is over. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome contestant number two. Jafet Masao, please confirm that you have pinned the timer and I will go off video in case that helps. Thank you, Madam Contest Chair. I confirm I can see the timer. Okay, and I confirm that I heard you loud and clear. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome contestant number two, Jafet Masao. Jafet. Masao. The world needs you to be the best version of yourself, so why settle for less? What a poignant question and a deep thought for us. I like the way Nadia introduced her speech. This is one of the things that stood out, sparkled, and shone in her speech. A keeper for me, she had a wonderful introduction. She talked about the Tesla computers. She talked about the cell phone inventions of man. But why has anyone not invented how to find the perfect mate? With that twist, I became alert that this speech is about finding the best mate. Wonderful foundation. I liked Nadia's vulnerability. When Nadia, you introduced your personal story, you took that opportunity to rip open your chest Hold out your heart. Let the audience feel your surprise, your pain, your joy. When you use a personal story, not only will you become vulnerable, but you have the opportunity to endear yourself to your audience as you share your downs, your ups, your journey, and your struggles. Well done, Nadia, for using a personal story. I liked your rich language. You talked about the man of my dreams. You talked about being a serial data. All this rich language works to build their story. Beautiful language is like a beautiful dress that dresses our thoughts. And your thoughts were crystal clear in my mind as you used your flowery language. How can we take this speech to a higher level? How can we make it sparkle shine even more? Allow me to state three points the first is to say that speech is performance. I was listening in for use of pitch, pace, and pulsing as you delivered your speech because as long as you're living, you can do anything. Your voice is a gift. Use it. Second one, stereotyping. When you talk negative points, avoid using you. I don't know my audience that well. I use you when it's positive. In negatives, I use most of us or even you and I. I include myself in the negative. Finally, dialogue. There was opportunity to use dialogue in your presentation. What did the man say to you? Nadia, stop being a baby. I'm out of here. When you use dialogue, you have the opportunity to drive us deep into your struggles and to celebrate the peaks of your success. In summation, consider that speech is a performance. Use pause, pacing, and pulsing. Don't stereotype your audience and use dialogue. Finally, I liked your great foundation, vulnerability, and rich language. I look forward to seeing you on stage, online, delivering another wonderful speech. Well done, contest chair. Thank you. You may now switch off your video and unmute and mute yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, we will observe one minute of silence for the judges to write up their ballots. And at the same time, Madam SA, please bring out the next contestants.
I confirm our next contestant is in the room. Contest chair, one minute is over. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome contestant number three, Harriet O'City. Harriet? I do not see Harriet on my screen. SAA, please confirm she's here and her video is on. I confirm she's there and her video is on. Good, thank you. Harriet, please confirm that you can see and have pinned the timer. Uh, just hold on, I can't. Madam SA, did we lose Harriet? I was taken back to the breakout room. I don't know why. Not a problem. Let me try and get the timer. Sure. Okay. Okay, I can see the timer. You can see and you have pinned the timer, right? Yes. Good. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome contestant number three, Harriet O'City. Harriet O'City. You can speak well if your tongue can deliver the message of your heart. Nadia, you didn't only speak well, you spoke very well. Contest chair, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Nadia took us through a journey, encouraging us to find ourselves. You will agree with me that Nadia had great gestures when it came to talking about this story. Nadia, I love the way that you kept telling us about how you had found your true self. Your vocal variety, as you talked about your story in places like when you mentioned how your true love broke your relationship was very clear to every single one of us. I loved the way that you paced your speech. It was so easy to follow you on that journey. Nadia, your story resonated with me because I can be intellectual and emotive at the same time. I know as it is for many people in the room. You talked about the computers and the cell phones and you came back to a story we could relate with. Very well done to be able to gain, engage with everybody in the audience. Nadia, it has been said by John Collins that good, is the enemy of great. And I would like to give you two recommendations to move you from good to great. Nadia, in as much as you had great gestures as you expressed yourself, I thought you could have used your hands more. When you talked of true love, I would have expected that you could have said, my true love. It also would have been great if you had been more vulnerable enough, this was a very emotive story. Tell us a little bit more about how you were able to find your true self so that we could relate and follow on your example. Nadia, a vulnerable story reaches the hearts of the people you're talking to. Do allow yourself to become more vulnerable. Overall, I love that you gave a story that even I could relate to because my true love also disappointed me, my first true love. In summary, Nadia, a great way to connect 
complex issues with a very emotive issue that speaks to the heart. A great way you did in using your gestures. Those two recommendations, using more of your gestures and becoming more vulnerable will make your story even greater. Well done in challenging us to find our true self. Contest chair, back to you. Thank you, Harriet. You may now switch off your video and mute yourself. We will give the judges a, mean, a minute to collect their ballots. And at the same time, Madam Essie, please bring out the fourth contestant. I confirm the fourth contestant is in the main room. Contest chair, one minute is over. Thank you. Contestant number four, please confirm that you have seen and pinned the timer. I have seen and pinned the timer. Thank you very much. And I confirm your voice is clear. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome contestant number four, Ethiopia's Tadisi. Ethiopia's Tadisi. Eloquent speech is not from lip to ear, it's from heart to heart. And Toastmaster Nadia delivered a speech from her heart to ours when she told us, never settle. Toastmaster Nadia, how I enjoyed your speech and what an honor it is for me to be giving you feedback on this excellent speech. I'm going to be focusing on two elements of your speech, the content and the delivery. Let's start with the content. The topic that you chose was broad enough for many people to relate to, to engage with, and to personalize. I felt like that was an excellent choice. In your introduction, you started talking about technology, Tesla, and here I am thinking, where is she going with this? And then you brought it all to why can't technology figure out a way where it can build the perfect mate for us? Excellent question, by the way. I felt like that buildup was done very beautifully. Nadia, your word choices are so excellent. To mention a few, epiphany, audacity, revolutionary. Those were amazing choices of words. Another thing I felt like you did great in your content is that you included a personal experience. I felt like that personal experience always allows us to engage with the speaker. What I would have loved though is for you to have built a bit more on that personal experience to tell us what it means when you told us, I found me. What does that mean exactly? Another thing, Toastmaster Nadia, I felt like could have been done a bit better is you talked about your experience of dating and finding the perfect mate. Around the end of the body of your speech, I would have loved it if perhaps you mentioned that at first as a specific example, and then built on to the generic example of why settle in anything in our lives. When we talk about the delivery, Nadia, your use of time was excellent. You took around six minutes and 30 seconds when you were supposed to take between five, five and seven minutes. Well done. Another thing in your delivery you did well that nobody can deny so is your powerful tone. And the bonus that you need for the day. The, the, the fact that you did not use any filler words was so excellent. Your body language was so open and so expressive. I really, really loved that. 
You added a few humor elements to your speech, but while you were delivering the humor, I would have loved it if your facial expressions also complemented the humor elements of your speech. That would have made it even better. But honestly, Toastmaster Nadia, all in all, on this platform where we're talking about making boss moves, you have challenged me and the audience to make a boss move and never settle. And you delivered that in such an excellent manner. Congratulations and thank you. Back to you. Thank you. We will now give one minute to the judges to write up their ballot. And at the same time, Madam SAA, please bring out contestant number five. I confirm contestant number five is in the main room. Madam Contest Chair, the one minute is over. Thank you, Madam SA. I was looking and waiting for you to unmute me. Contestant number five, are you in the room? And please confirm that you can see and have pinned the timer. I am in the room and I can see the timer. Thank you. And I confirm that I can hear you loud and clear. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome contestant number five, Enid Kinyar Kanyiri. Enid Kanyiri. A speech has incredible power to make one saw or saw. Your speech, Nadia, is one of those that made me saw with knowledge and inspiration. Contest chair, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Nadia, that was an eye-opening speech told with passion. And as you told your speech, what you excelled in is firstly, when you use questions in a speech, it's like a window you let us in. Nadia, you used good questions to let me write into your speech. You asked, is there a perfect guy? Why are you struggling? I was right in there wondering what is this in this speech about circling, about perfect guy, yet it started with such analogies like computer chips. I was there waiting to hear what is next. And well, right there in your speech, this brings me to my second point of how you excelled. You told it with great features. For example, you used good volume and speed to enhance, your speech, to enhance your speech, especially when you said, you do not have to settle for less. The speed made those words sink in and the volume was right. 
And then with curiosity of where this is heading to, you finished with a twist that was really impactful, that it is about all these discoveries you're talking about is about self-discovery. What else at this point do we want to hear than self-discovery? And that's why we are even here listening to these speeches today. That was really great. What are the areas you can improve in? Well, you are right here in your speech. I felt if you used the stage a little bit more, especially when you discovered self, you, you move, you use another point of stage so that you can get into another point, another twist of your story about self-discovery. That would have helped use different point of stages for different points. Another point I felt you would have used it better is use of visual aids for words that were not very common, like computer chips, like synonyms, something, words that are not common to us, you could have used visual aids or props. To sum it all, a good speech is like a scale of a balance. You excelled, your scale was scaling high with good gestures, questions, and a very impactful twist. If you used your stage well, and also visual aids to enhance your speech, and believe you will have mastered the scale of scaling your speech high. Otherwise, you leave me with a question, why circle, which is really impactful. Back to you, contest chair. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We will give one minute for the judges to write up their ballots. Meanwhile, Madam SA, please bring out the six contestants. I confirm the sixth contestant is in the room. Contest chair, the one minute is over. Thank you. Contestant number six, please confirm that you can see and have timed, pinned the timer. I confirm. Good, and I confirm that I have heard you loud and clear. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome contestant number six, Mary Kip Kemoy. Mary Kip Kemoy. Why settle? Nadia Vanderpool. Thank you so much for uplifting my spirits this morning. I will not settle for any less. I have just one life to live. I would like to reflect on your wonderful speech by looking at the commendations, two commendations, two recommendations, and just challenging you to continue doing what you're doing. On the commendations, Nadia, you connected to my emotions. When we speak, we, we desire action. And all human action is about emotion. By connecting to my emotion, you connected to my ability to take action from your speech. And you connected, I'll give two examples. First, you're very vulnerable to me. You give a personal story, how you are in a personal, intimate relationship that went south and I could connect to that. The second way that you did, you related to questions and opportunities that are every day that I also experience. We all eat, we all desire to connect as human beings and you asked, how are we still struggling with that? And I found this genius 
you asked, is my fear still holding me back in my public speaking skills? I believe all of us logged into this call today have a desire in public speaking. That way you connected to my emotion and elevated this speech. Nadia, you not, it was not only how you connected to my emotion in the second combination, but the way you did it. You used probing questions, a very loud voice that I could hear, but also probed me. It's not enough that we connect to emotion. It's more important that we keep our audience hooked and walking along with us. How did you do this? Puzzling questions. It's puzzling that Tesla can be able to have a car that can order something, but they cannot come up with a perfect mate. It, it is also, how do you do this? How are we still holding back fear? All those questions kept me hooked because they were unanswered. Now, Nadia, I felt that there are two ways I would recommend that you could elevate this speech further. Science of communication tells us that 93% of our communication happens outside what we speak. And I felt that our bo your body could have spoken even further. I noticed that when we started, you started your speech, you were still pacing around and a bit not aware of the camera. And I would recommend a poise and a wide, beautiful smile with that beautiful voice that allows you presence into this. I would also recommend that as you take your speech, you elevate it further. And when you do opt to settle, invite me with silence. All in all, why settle? Take it to the next level. Back to you, contest chair. Thank you. You may now switch off your video and mute yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain in silence until the chief judge and the ballot counters have left the room to the breakout room. I will also request that all the judges turn off the sound in your devices as you do your final ballots. We will give the judges five minutes to do their final ballots. SA, please confirm that the chief judge and the ballot counters have left the room. Judges, ensure that your ballots are valid by printing and signing your name and listing the first three place getters and submitting them to the ballot counters and the chief judge as previously instructed. Madam SA, I wait your confirmation that the chief judge has left. I confirm that the chief judge and the ballot counters are in their breakout room. We'll be opening the meeting room shortly. Thank you, thank you very much. Toastmasters guests, that brings us to the conclusion of the evaluation speech contest. I will request right now that the contestants all join me on screen. Madam SA, if you could facilitate and have all the contestants Join me on screen. I will interview the contestants and we will get to know them just a little bit better. I see contestant Enid Ethiopies. Jaffet has come on. I do see Mary, I have seen Harriet, and I have seen Lucy. 
Contestants, congratulations. You have made the boss moves. Congratulations. Now, let's have a little fun with you people. This is, if you will, impromptu speaking for you. And I will start randomly. I'll actually follow what I see on my screen, starting with you, Ethiopia's Tadisi, DTM. Ethiopia's, please tell us, you are a distinguished Toastmaster. How did you get there? How did you get to be a DTM? After seven years of grueling dedication to Toastmasters, that's how I got to DTM. After over a hundred speeches, a hundred or more evaluations delivered and accepted, countless, countless leadership roles, mentoring, coaching, sponsoring, failing, getting back up again, avoiding Toastmasters, attending six to seven Toastmaster sessions a week, uh, many, many ups and downs, commitment, love for the platform of Toastmasters. It's all of those that. Thank you very much. That is really interesting that you became DTM even after avoiding Toastmasters every now and then. Next, I want to move on again to distinguished Toastmasters, Japheth. Japheth, you've been a president of a club, you've been a sergeant at times, you've been a parliamentarian, and you've been a division director. What motivated you to take up all these leadership roles in Toastmasters? Thank you, Madam Contest Chair. I would say it's two things, two sides of the same coin, selfish, interest, and service. Toastmasters offers us an opportunity to grow, develop ourselves. It is indeed where leaders are made and an opportunity to serve, whether that's a sergeant at arms or president of the club, gives you an excellent opportunity to be of service to the Toastmasters community. The flip side is that you personally grow. You grow, you learn how to prepare a room as a sergeant at arms, check and make sure everybody has everything that they need as president, you're the CEO of the club, you make sure that every part and piece is working as it should. And you know that you're the one setting the temperature of the club, the same as a division director. I did all those things to serve, but also to develop myself. Back to you, Madam Contest Chair. Thank you very much, DTM Jaffet Toastmasters guest. It is okay to be selfish as you serve others. Thank you very much. Mary Kip Kemoy, in 2021, you were the Table Topics finalist in TCON, and you have been competing every year, I want to believe, since I saw you. What inspires you to compete and keep competing? I would echo what Dieter Jaffet said, growth, personal growth. There, you have to have a desire to see a better version of yourself. And when you compete first, the platform that you're sharing takes next level. You can get into a comfort in a club, in a division, come to a district, something that automatically you're forced to is to go to the YouTube videos and check what's happening to other places in the world. So you just elevate yourself. You challenge yourself to the next level. And that has been my three year chunk of what I've been trying to do, maybe since we last first connected. Just always be in a contest every year and see what extra you can learn. Wow, wow. Thank you, Mary Toastmasters. You had it. When you see these people on stage, the creme, the, the la creme it is because they contest and they keep growing. Thank you very much. Enid, Toastmaster Enid, you did say in your profile that what is, inspires you is to influence through treatment and educating in the health sector in Kenya. That is quite something. Please tell us, how are you influencing um, and through treatment and education, how are you doing that? Thank you, Jenny. First, I am a physiotherapist by profession, and then an occupational physiotherapist or workplace physiotherapist. That means 
looking into the designs of our, our workplace fits into the human body so that you do not to prevent now these musculoskeletal disorders. So in this field, what I enjoy most is training because I believe it is preventing that is better than cure. And through training, I do, I, I do corporate trainings and I write a few articles here and there. That is, that is how I plan to reach to many and influence this part wow. of Wow, that is good. I wish you were in Nairobi, then, you know, maybe I would call on you, but Toastmasters, you hear, we have physiotherapists in the room. Toastmasters is really for everybody. Lucy Manyara, I've watched you compete at the club, then you moved on to the division, and here you are today. Please tell us a little bit about that experience, being an, a contestant, how you were preparing, and how you got here. Tell us a little bit. Thank you, Jenny. I think when I joined um, Rafiki Toastmasters, I met some very talented people there. So I just wanted to get past Rafiki because it was impossible to get past Rafiki. Rafiki has such, such people that I just couldn't get. So I just challenged myself and I am actually amazed what, about what I have become. I have learned so much during the contest and I just wonder why would anyone not compete? So that's how I did. Good question. Why would you not compete Toastmasters? Now Toastmasters, yes, you love your clubs. You love the people in your clubs. You love the environment. You love the vibe. But why get stuck and settled in your club? To venture out and be a contestant. Next, we move to Harriet of City. Harriet coming to us all the way from Uganda. Harriet, one of your hobbies is blogging. What do you blog about? Uh, thank you so much. I blog about my experiences in life. I am a person who believes John Maxwell when he says influence, leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. And therefore, in this season of my life, I believe that people who are following me, who look up to me, and therefore, as I blog, I blog to inspire others to reach their full potential in whatever it is that they aspire to do. Thank you. Thank you, Harriet, for willing and wanting to be an influence in other people's lives. And you will share with us your blogging site and we will follow you and see what you have to say. Toastmasters, what you are saying here today and fellow guests are Toastmasters making the boss moves. Let me do another round and go to you back to Ethiopia and say your favorite quote is that everything is scary until it's not. Can you tell us a time when you thought something was scary yeah, and yeah. then it was not? Almost every single decision in my life. <laughs> I am generally a person who overthinks most of the decisions that I make. I will think about it 10 to 100 times even taking before taking that first step. And I realized at some point, and it's always like after I take that step and look back, I realize, really, is this what I was worried about? Is this what I was scared about? So I realized that really almost everything is scary until it's not. And when you realize it's not so scary, it's not very difficult to make that first step. So it's now become my favorite quote. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ethiopians. Let us all now What's that scary thing? Let's get on with it. After all, in just a minute, it will not be scary anymore. Japheth DTM, you are on stage. You have Toastmasters in the room. You have none Toastmasters in the room. Tell us and inspire us. Why should we strive to be a distinguished Toastmaster? Why should I bother? Why should I work so hard? Why should I make the efforts? Japheth. Thank you, Madam Contest Chair. It's like ascending the Everest. I would liken it just for that recognition in itself. But along the journey, you get a lot of opportunity to grow and most importantly, to work with other people, especially when you get to the High Performance Leadership Project, which is part of most terminal projects for the DTM you get an opportunity to put together an action team 
a guidance committee, come up with a project, design it, you're just in the middle. You have your guidance committee to help you think through and all the work is done by the action team. Experiences like this in the journey to being a Toastmaster, a distinguished Toastmaster is what should entice everybody to go for this journey. You grow in immense ways that you cannot imagine. Back to you, Madam Todd. Contest Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jafet. And I am following in your footsteps. I want to be a DTM just like you. I do see the red light. I will ask the MC or somebody, do I come to a complete halt right now or do I finish the question? Somebody please advise me. I probably should obey the red light and say Toastmasters guests, it's been my absolute pleasure, absolute pleasure to be here watching and being with people who have made boss moves. Yes, MC John Zira, I will say we will take you off the screen, our contestants, but we will ask just for a minute that our SAA team and production team, please display the certificates of participation. And as we do that, feel free to unmute if the SAA allows us or use the emoji and let us just appreciate our contestants this morning. There they are. They are coming up one after the other. Carry out the listening. Good stuff. Jeff Peth Masao. Mary Kip Kemoy. Good stuff. Thank you, thank you very much. May I request the production team to also please display the certificate for our test speaker, Nadia. Once again, Nadia, thank you. Thank you, thank you 